Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing my November book haul. So this is actually my second time filming this video, which is really unfortunate. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what happened, but I will talk more about that in my book misannouncement video. But there is a plus size to losing all this footage, which is the fact that I had been waiting for a package and it arrived the night after I filmed. So now I can actually include those books in this haul. So there's that at least. I am seriously super excited about all the books in this haul. I have a couple of 2021 arcs here and I have some recent releases that I cannot wait to get to. So without further ado, let's just get it into it. So today's video is kindly sponsored by Disney Book Group in honor of the recent release of Rebel Rose by Emma Terrio. This is the first book in the Queen's Council series which sounds so cool. Like this is basically a combination of everything that I love. It is a historical reimagining of the Disney princesses. So in this one we follow Belle in 1789 in France as she's coming into power and obviously that's not a great time to be queen. So you're seeing these traditional Disney princesses come into their royalty in their actual historical period. I think this concept sounds so fascinating and I can't wait to see what's going to be done with it. Like Belle in particular, one, she has a very crappy time period. Like we have France, the French Revolution, that time period. And she's such a loving and caring character that I'm so interested to see how she is going to deal with all the challenges that come along with royalty, especially during that time period. These also have a touch of magic in there, of course, which is so amazing. So you have the fantasy element to it, you have a historical element to it, and you have that Disney princess too. So I don't know what more you could want from a historical fantasy, honestly. Like, I'm completely sold on that. If you guys were interested in checking out Rebel Rose by Emma Terrio, then definitely check out the link in my description box down below. It is out now, so you can go and pick up a copy. I definitely am going to try and read it very, very soon because it sounds so good and it can't wait to see what else is going to come out in this series. Like, it is right up my alley. So for the rest of this haul, I am actually dividing it between books that I bought myself with my own money and books that I was sent. So I will start off with the books that I bought myself because honestly, there's only four of them. So that's gonna be fast. So the first book that I bought myself is a pre-order. These actually are all new releases and that is Crazy Stupid Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. So this is the latest installment in the Bromance Book Club series, which I can't believe I just started this year. It feels like I've been reading it forever, but it is just this year that I finally started reading it. I mean, it's not like it had been out for a long time before, but anyways, this one is following the main character who was introduced in the second book. She works at a cat cafe and she was kind of involved in the situation in the second book. And now she has discovered that she has a sister that she didn't know about. And she ends up turning to her lifelong best friend for help in this situation. And he is crushing on her. He's never told her, but he's been in love with her for years. And he's like, is this the time that I tell her that I've been in love with? Her, which like finding out you have a long lost sister doesn't seem like the best timing but like you know to each their own. I think that this one appeals to me a lot more than the second book. I did really enjoy the second book but this one just sounds like everything that I would love. You have a cat cafe so there's gonna be cats in the story and you have that kind of friendship to friends to lovers which is one of my favorite tropes. I'm not really into the enemies to lovers and that was more so the trope in the second book so I think that this one is going to be something that will appeal to me a little bit more and I'm so excited to read it. I know it's going to be a fun, quick, and fast read. I also love the cover for this one. This is my favorite cover of them all, but it kind of seems like they're changing the covers for them. I think the next book that's coming out is called Isn't It Bromantic? And for that one, like, there's just something that's different. It doesn't quite not match, but it also doesn't entirely match. I definitely just prefer this one. The cover for the next one does really 
nothing for me. Although I will say the next one is focusing on the Russian, which everyone is very excited about, and I am looking forward to hearing more about him, apart from what we know already. Next up is a book that I actually have had for a while, but I realized that I haven't hauled it yet, and there's one other book that was sent to me by a publisher that I had the same thing happen, but this book is House of Dragons by Jessica Clues. So I have read another book by Jessica Clues, which was, oh, I can picture the cover. What is it called? A Shadow Bright and Burning. So that was a trilogy and it's like a magical like Harry Potter-esque but Victorian story and I didn't really love that one but this one sounds super appealing so I was like I will give her another shot. Obviously this deals with dragons and there is a dragon throne that there is a call to compete for. So answering that call we have the typical list of suspects but I'm not over this trope of like the liar, the soldier, the servant, the thief, the murderer. I said thief funny but you get what I mean. I really enjoy that trope of this kind of band of misfits coming together. In this case, they're battling, but that's kind of a different twist on it because I feel like generally they have to work together and I'm not sure if they do in this case, but I haven't read many books about dragons, definitely not many that I have really loved that have won me over. And this one actually, when I was going to add it on Goodreads, it has really good reviews because I was kind of debating returning it, but I kept it and I think, I hope that's gonna pay off, but I am excited for it. Next up is a book that I picked up on a total whim and that is Comfort and Joy by Kristen Hanna. So I was at Costco doing my grocery shopping and I always walk through the book section just, you know, to see what's going on, to check up on it. And they had this book here and I had never seen it before. It's actually a reprint. So this came out in 2005, but they reprinted it this year. And it is A Christmas Story by Kristen Hanna. And Kristen Hanna, if you don't know is the author of The Nightingale which is one of my favorite books of all time so I was thrilled to find out that she has a Christmas story even though it's like really short still I'm super excited for it. I've only read the one book by her so I think that it's time that I read another one like I also have The Winter Garden by her but just haven't read it yet. I don't know why. But this one is a fable and it follows a recently divorced woman who she's usually so excited for Christmas but this year there's just no excitement for her so she decides to just up and leave, go to the Pacific Northwest, not really tell anyone where she's going, and try and reignite her Christmas spirit and she ends up coming across a six-year-old that she really bonds with and his father and it's their first year without his mother for Christmas so it's going to be a really hard time but they end up finding some joy in each other so I think that Kristen Hanna is an amazing author and I'm excited to read some more from her especially in the Christmas spirit. And the last book that I actually picked up for myself is A Super Fake Love Song by David Yoon. So this is another author where I read the first book but in this case I didn't finish his first book. It's just something about it didn't mesh with me but I just wanted to give it another go, especially like I had pre-ordered this one and I kind of forgot until it showed up on my doorstep. But then I opened it up and this map kind of won me over. So it has a map and it says mystical realms of Southern California. So I just thought that seemed like a lot of fun. But in this you follow a self-proclaimed nerd, Sunny, and then he ends up meeting Cirrus, who is this girl who he thinks is super cool. Now there's an incident where she mistakes his brother's room which is very like rock star all of that for his room and he just goes with it so he constructs this whole lie where he is a rock star he's the front of a band and he has his best friends form this fake band with him so he can impress this girl but the problem is the lie obviously those keep piling on you know it's like a taking time bomb and obviously she's gonna find out eventually but he's starting to fall in love with her so now the stakes are very high and I'm kind of stressed out just reading the synopsis but like I think it does seem like it could be really fun. I like the dichotomy of the two characters and I'm really interested to see how that dynamic will play out. Okay now I have a lot of books that have been sent to me so thank you very much to the publishers for sending them to me. I can't wait to get to all of them honestly I'm so excited for them. So the first one is a 2021 release and that is One of the Good Ones by Micah Mulit and Maritza Mulit. These are the authors of Dear Haiti Love Elaine which I read this past year and enjoyed. They are sisters and I love the fact that they write together. I can never write anything with my sisters or really anyone else for that matter honestly. I'm way too controlling. It just would not end well. But this is about sisters who their sister was a social activist and was killed at a rally.
Valley and they are grappling with that grief and also discovering more about their history and how people are remembered and why only certain people are deemed worthy of being remembered. So I think this is going to be a really powerful and interesting read. Probably not the easiest one but I am looking forward to it. I'm not sure because the other book that they have has like different excerpts. It was kind of multimedia format. I'm not sure if this one also follows that or if it's just the story. It kind of looks like it's just the story. But anyways, I think that this is going to be a very prevalent and timely story with a lot of social commentary and it's definitely one that I'm excited for. Also, if you guys wanted to pick up a copy, it is out January 5th, 2021. So not that long of a wait, but you can also pre-order it now. Next is a book that I kind of requested on a whim. I feel like I hadn't really heard anything about it but something about the cover just, I don't know, made me request it. And now I have actually heard some really great things about it and I'm super excited that I have it. So that book is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. The concept for it is really, really cool. So as it says on the cover, she came from nothing. They have everything. Let the games begin. So this billionaire dies and he leaves his fortune to a complete stranger, which is our main character. She has no clue. She's never heard of this guy before, but she is set to inherit billions from him. The catch for that is that she has to move into his mansion, which has like all these secret passages. He loved puzzles and it's just kind of like the mansion in Truly Devious is what it makes me think of. The other catch to that is the fact that there are his four grandsons who are currently occupying that mansion and obviously they're not very happy because they've just been dispossessed and just like lost out on a ton of money so they're very skeptical about who this girl is and why she's here and she has to like I don't know I guess like solve a puzzle in this mansion to get this inheritance. This is just such a unique concept and sounds like it's going to be really cool, lots of fun, edge of your seat kind of read. And I wish that I had known about it sooner, to be honest. Like, I'm super eager to read this one. Oh, I can't wait. This book actually found its way to the wrong pile. So this one I actually bought myself, but it is Instant Karma by Marissa Meyer. So Marissa Meyer is the author of a ton of books. She has the Lunar Chronicles series. She has Heartless. She has the Renegade series. She just has written in a vast number of genres, which just is a marvel to me because I feel like I can only write like I wrote a fantasy, but even that was very difficult and the contemporary was much easier for me. But this is actually her first First venture into contemporary. It's not entirely contemporary because there is a little bit of a twist to it, but I'm very intrigued to see what's going to happen with that twist. So I really enjoyed Renegades, loved Heartless. It is one of my favorite, if not, it probably is my favorite Alice retelling actually. And the Lunar Chronicles I did really enjoy. I just thought it was a little bit overhyped for my taste, but I did still like it. So this I don't know how I'm gonna feel about her contemporary with a twist, but I think if anyone can do it, it's gonna be her. So our main character ends up waking up one day after a night out with friends with the ability to inflict instant karma on everyone around her, whether it's good or bad. I think that that is going to be really interesting. It's kind of setting up for an enemies to lovers storyline too, which isn't always my favorite, but if done well, I can get behind it. So that karma thing, I, I feel like that's going to be a mess and we'll see how that plays out. Next up is Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett. I was actually sent this because I did an event with these authors as well as another author that I'll talk about their book later, but it was a lot of fun to discuss fantasy with them. And this one I feel like has flown really under the radar. I hadn't really seen it before, but it was super fun. I have read it and I talked about it in my November, no, October wrap up. So I will link that down below for you guys if you are interested in more thoughts on this book. But it deals with Faye. So we have our main character, Rags, who is a thief and he ends up getting caught and then he is blackmailed by this sadistic sorcerer to discover and retrieve this ancient Faye relic. But it turns out when he retrieves the relic, he wasn't expecting it, but it isn't actually a person. It is an ancient Faye prince and thus 
is just the relationship between rags and shiny or shining talon. It is such a beautiful romantic chemistry between the two of them, a great queer romance and a really action-packed fantasy. So definitely check this one out. The next few books were actually sent to me by Simon & Schuster. So this is the package that I have been eagerly awaiting because there are so many books in here that I cannot wait for. So first is Rent a Boyfriend by Gloria Chow. This sounds amazing. So one, it's a contemporary that is set at college, so I love more of that. I love that kind of upper YA. I feel like you don't get very many college age characters because there's kind of that like cusp of is it adult, is it YA, but I do like to see more of it in YA. So we have our college age character and she ends up hiring from this rent a boyfriend company which they have boyfriends that you can rent out that will please Asian parents. So she is trying to please her Taiwanese parents with her boyfriend. So she rents this guy and I just I think it's like a fake dating thing we have going here. I love fake dating. That is a trope that I very much enjoy and this one just sounds like the setup for a lot of hilarity, so much fun and definitely a lot of romance blooming. So I'm so excited. Next up is Love and Olives by Jenna Evans Welch. I am so excited to have this book. So I didn't know that she was coming out with another book first of all. And then when I found out about it, it was actually pushed back because of the pandemic and everything. But now it's finally here. So this is the author of Love and Luck. And what's the first one? This one's Love and All is and that is all I can think. Love and Gelato. So they are travel romance stories and contemporaries, but they all have more of an emotional impact to them. So the first book is set in Italy and the second book is set in Ireland and this one is set in Greece. Greece is one of the places in Europe that I haven't been to yet that I really really would love to go to. I am dying to go there to be honest. Obviously I'm not going anytime soon but it is on my list for sure. So in here we have a main character whose father is very estranged. She hasn't talked to him. He left when she was eight years old and she obviously doesn't really have a relationship with him. So she's very surprised when he ends up sending her a note being like, Hello! One of the things that they bonded over was their love of Greek myths and the lost city of Atlantis. Now his project for researching the lost city of Atlantis is now being funded by National Geographic which is why he contacts her to come and help and she jumps right on that opportunity. I love this concept. It kind of reminds me quite a bit, I mean I don't want to say quite a bit, but I feel like it's a little bit more similar to what I remember from Love and Gelato with like the parents thing like in Love and Gelato she's just lost her mother, her mother died, but in this case we have an estranged relationship and I did love how there was an emotional impact but it was also a fun and romantic story at the same time. I think that she does a really good job of balancing those levels and I'm just really excited to have a new contemporary by her. I hope she keeps doing these where it's like a love story but a little bit more intense and it sets something somewhere in Europe. I'd love to see someone like some with basically everywhere like one in Germany, one set in Amsterdam for sure or really anywhere in the Netherlands I'd be super excited about. Like I hope that she keeps with this concept because I adore them. Next is Chasing Lucky by Jen Bennett. So this has been the year of Jen Bennett for me. I had only read one of her books in the past and this year I have read three of them and I have found that she is such a hidden gem. I feel like her books should be talked about a lot more. They remind me a lot of Morgan Matson, who I also love but one of my favorite things she does is she has characters with very interesting hobbies and this book is no exception. The main character is a budding photographer and she has lived with her single mother her entire life just moving around but they end up going back to their sleepy New England hometown. She is convinced that it's only temporary. She will eventually go out west and make her career as a photographer but what she doesn't plan for is a run-in with the town bad boy who also used to be her best friend. I am excited. I love that concept. I love photography and I love characters who are photographers as well. I feel like she does settings really well too and there's just something about her romances that are so atmospheric and I just thoroughly enjoy them. Like even my least favorite I did still really really like. So I'm super excited to have her latest release and I'm super excited to read it hopefully soon. Next up is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. This sounds so good and also this cover is so adorable. I feel like I've heard this name before. Does she 
have another book? It does not say. I don't know why I recognize her name. I don't think I've read anything by her before, but this is about a main character who has her life pretty well planned out. Everything is going great. She has a great boyfriend who she's going to be with forever, and she's going to take over her abuela's role as head baker at a bakery, and she's going to move in with her best friend. Everything is well planned out, but then it all ends up crashing down, and her parents end up very concerned for her and her health and her mental health particularly. So they send her off to England to live with some family friends for three months and recharge and reset. I am really excited for this one. I am just eager to read more about travel books to be honest right now because I can't travel right now so I like reading about different settings and I feel like it's been a while since I've read something set abroad and I feel like this character getting to know more about this English side of the world and recovering after everything has been falling apart around her is going to make for a great story. Next up is Lies Like Poison by Chelsea Pitcher. So this is about Belladonna, what was it, Poppy Lily and Belladonna. So they are trying to protect their best friend Raven, they would do anything to do that, and they discover that he is being abused by his mother, his stepmother. So they devise a plan to poison her, and then the plan ends up falling apart, one of them gets cold feet, and then three years later, after this group has kind of fallen apart, the stepmother turns up dead and she was killed by Belladonna but that's the only one so there's like a mystery surrounding it and how it happened and it seems like an intriguing concept. I've never really heard of this book before. Not sure what to make of the synopsis but I'm definitely intrigued. The final book that was sent to me by Simon & Schuster in this package is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. For some reason this book kind of flew completely under my radar but when they sent the manifest of what was going to be included in this box this book was obviously on here and I looked it up on Goodreads and I was like, oh my gosh, how did I miss this? So it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in 1920s Shanghai and you follow a former flapper. I am so excited. One, the 1920s. I love reading about that time period. Two, a historical fiction that is not Western. I have read so few. I Have I even read any? I don't know. Most of the historical fictions that I read are set in Europe. It's so hard to find ones that aren't, so I'm so excited for one that is not. Now this does have a fantastical element to it I believe and it's about rival gangs. I totally forgot about that part so like I just am so excited. I think this sounds so so amazing and I hope that it does live up to my expectations because I would love to have more not western centric historical fictions to recommend to you guys. Next is Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. So this is the other author that I did that event with and I discovered luckily before the event that I had been pronouncing her name wrong the entire time. I've been saying Poston in all my videos but it is indeed Poston. But since I was listening to the audiobook I found out before I started talking to her which thankfully. But this is a woodsy like fairy tale. It reads like a fairy tale. It's very light, very easy fantasy. You have this utopic kingdom and it's a utopia because it's surrounded by these cursed woods but one of the past kings made a deal with the woods to keep the curse out but the main character is the royal gardener's daughter and she actually has part of this woods curse in her so she has magical abilities because she had a very close run-in and survived and that's what she was left with. Now when a coronation goes wrong, they end up going and venturing into these woods. There's a fox companion. Everything about it is just like a fairy tale and it's really lovely, woodsy, natural, perfect for this time of year. Next is Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. So this is the book that I was talking about where I've had it for a very long time and it was sent to me but I just completely forgot to haul it to be honest. But a lot of you guys have also been recommending this to me actually because I believe the one of the main characters wants to write, yeah, so Rowan secretly wants to write romance novels but she's anxious about the future and it is about two academic rivals, overachievers who end up having to come together and they hate each other. It's definitely enemies to lovers but I do love reading about writers and I think that the enemies, like I can see the foundation of enemies in this point. I think that's my biggest issue with enemies to lovers is a lot of time I'm like I don't understand why you hate each other. It doesn't really make sense. It's just for effect but academic rivals, that makes sense to me so I can get on board with that. Speaking of academics, next up is The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. This 
once again flew under my radar entirely but it also isn't out until January 5th actually I keep on thinking it's out now for some reason but I got like quite a few Halloween-y reads kind of too late to actually read them for Halloween and this was one of them this is also college age actually because it's about a sorority but the sorority is a secret because it is actually a witch's coven so you have one character who is invited to pledge super excited about it doesn't know that she's a witch and then you have another character who's a legacy and knows that she's a witch and knows that this has been her destiny and wants to become the leader of this sorority. So definitely a different dynamic there. Sororities are not nearly as big as they are in the States, in Canada, so it's definitely a different world to me, but I love the idea of having one be a witch's coven because for some reason that just kind of fits. Next is another Halloween-y read that I was kind of sent too late and that is Horrid by Katrina Leno. So this is about a main character who her and her mother they move to her hometown because the daughter's father has just died. That got very complicated. I don't know why I explained it like that, but it's the mother's childhood home and they move back there and her mother is kind of like, she's really struggling and the main character discovers that there is this locked storage room that her mother has, but behind it it's not a storage room, it's actually a little girl's bedroom that has been preserved and it's not empty. I don't know, really, <laughs> I have a paranoia about locked doors now ever since uh, Coraline completely scarred me. Oh, that dang book, but this I think is going to be a ghost story and definitely one that I'm probably going to save for October next year because I think it will be perfect for that and I'm just interested to see how this ghost story is going to play out. Katrina Leno is the author of Summer of Salt, which I read earlier this year and really enjoyed, so we'll see. And the final book I'm actually just gonna talk about really briefly because I already hauled it in my last haul, but then the publisher sent it to me, so I completely forgot. So thank you to them for sending it to me though, but that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I have since read this, really enjoyed it. It is set in Italy in like the 1900s or something like that. I can't remember what the time period is. It's 1800s, 1900s. I just can't remember. But you follow twin sisters and the one twin is actually found brutally murdered. So you follow the one who is trying to avenge her death and figure out what happened to her her and along the way she summons a prince of hell and there's an angsty romance it's just like it's so great so this has more of a paranormal element than the stalking jack the ripper series did which i love stalking jack the ripper but i also ended up really loving this one the audiobook was fantastic so yeah so those are all the books for today's book haul i hope you guys enjoyed definitely a lot of reads that i'm really really excited to get to soon don't forget to check out rebel rose by emma terrio i will have a link Link down below so you guys can check it out because it is out now and I'm excited to read it. But thank you once again to Disney Book Group for sponsoring today's video and also thank you to all the publishers who sent me the books in today's video. It is much appreciated. It definitely helps me to save some money because we all know that I really like to buy books so it's nice to have them just sent to me instead. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please do let me know if you have read any of these books, your thoughts on them because I would love to know and I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye!